This is the BOGO episode. Buy one, get one. That one looks like it's an upgrade. Or not. Another good one. Come on up. Four doubles in Wimbledon. Hey folks, Greg Huff here, central Wisconsin, about a 350 acre lake, out with Justin Rowe from Skeeter Boat Center. We're getting on a crankbait bite. Got him? Yep. I'm going to cast exactly where yeah, you Yeah, I was going to say. That's a nice one. Oh, yeah. There's one. Well, there's one, there's two on this lake. Gotta love it. You threw basically the same, at the same spot the same angle that I threw it. Yep. <laughs> All right, made another, about two more casts at that same angle. Just took into another one. This one feels like another good sized one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh yeah. Probably not the best of the day, but another chunk. Another one in that two pound range. There's bigger ones out there, but uh, kind of fun when you get dialed into a spot to start working it. We're making almost the exact same cast, at the same angle, and we're getting rewarded. Yeah, Greg, like we were talking about earlier, once that sun gets up, uh, really pushes these fish to the bottom, and uh, they really react well to the crankbait. Earlier this morning when we first got here, it was pretty overcast, real dark, and you could actually see the fish suspending out off the edge of these humps, and uh, pretty slow as far as the crankbait bite. And now that the sun's getting up there, pushing towards the bottom, uh, they're a little easier to locate. That's pulling pretty good. Got a big snake there? I don't know. Head hooked bass. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Nice. That was right out there by the marker blue. Oh, yeah. It? Right off the tip of that point. Let's awesome. see if we can get the two for one special again here. I'm actually ready to make a move. That's alright with you. I'll move. Bust okay. a move. The good thing about this lake is there's not a lot of far running. Just idle over here or idle over there. Old school technology of a marker buoy is just never. Never really going to be replaced. That really gets old to do when you're fishing 30, 40 feet of water. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see where I'm at here. We're idling around these rock bars and we're staying off of them so we don't need to be on top of the rock bar. So we're idling around the sides of them and I can see the edge of the rock bar and what I'm doing is looking for the big standout boulders on there. Um, not the flat gravel areas, the big key boulders that the fish are going to be on. How does side imaging set itself apart or become an additional tool in your arsenal? I don't go on the water without it. It's cut down my fish finding time literally by probably 80%. Why side imaging is different from 2D sonar, it allows you to see out each side. And while well, 2D sonar, actually, you'll see right below the boat, which is great, but you want to be able to see out from side to side. That way you can locate rock piles that, you know, are off in the distance here and there. So you don't need to drive directly over the top of it. A lot of times in bass fishing, especially when you're driving over the top of the fish, you're spooking them. You need to make long casts, especially when you're in clear water and high blue earth skies. With side imaging, that uh, definitely gives you an advantage on being able to see them far out from the boat and put your baits where they are. Absolutely. We're idling around these rock bars and we're staying off of them so we don't need to be on top of the rock bar. So we're idling around the sides of them and I can see the edge of the rock bar and what I'm doing is looking for the big standout boulders on there. Um, not the flat gravel areas, the big key boulders that the fish are going to be on. We've got some fish located on the bottom just off to our left hand side here. So we threw the buoy out. I think we're gonna get out here and make a couple casts. Got him? That one feels pretty good. All right, we're dialed into another one here. Man, he's a fighter. I like it. He's fighting beyond his size. If he were a wrestler, he'd be wrestling up a weight. Look at that little guy. He fought like twice his size. I respect that guy. This deeper summer pattern that we're working, this crankbait pattern, when does that really turn on and does it last into the fall or do they, uh, does the pattern change again once we start, start getting a little cooler water? You know, every lake has its own little characteristics, but uh, definitely a post-spawn deal. Uh, Midsummer is always hot. If you can find rock on a lake, even if there are weeds, if you can find rock patches, uh, you can almost always count on them being there. Mm -hmm. 
And of course in the fall, I mean, is when it's the hottest, I think. Yeah. Especially on this lake, it's, it's just, they put the feed sack on and they just eat all day long. Mm -hmm. So this, you can come out, we can come out here for another month or two. And Absolutely. Work the same pattern. Yep. With the uh, early spring, a lot of the weeds came up early mm -hmm. and then they died off now. Died back. So now that, one. They, now that they've died Yahtzee. off. Yahtzee. Oh. I'll wait until I get a better look at them. That, that last one shrunk on me at the boat, but this one, this one feels pretty good. So this is uh, setting up on a new spot here. Second cast. Oh yeah, that one's not bad at all. Fighter, scrappy. Filled with two pounders. One. Yeah. The two pounders we've definitely been able to find a bunch of. I'm gonna swing us around here. All right. Anything to the right of this is not gonna be, it's just gonna be muck. Anything mm -hmm. on this side of it is gonna be muck. So this is basically the corner of it. Right beyond our our marker buoy there. Nope. Yeah, nice. When you get two cranks in, in one hit. Yeah. <laughs> They're active. Decent. Another one. Oh, he ate that one. Little guy. Double. Double. Just gotta keep him off out of our buoy marker there. Ooh. Jumper. Let's go down. Cookie cutter. Whoa, hey, hey, all right. Glad to meet you. Lost the handle on him. Another one just like the last one. This is the BOGO episode. Buy one, get one. That one looks like it's an upgrade. Or not. Another good one. Come on up. More doubles in Wimbledon. There's a pile of them in there. Got some birds of a feather here. You were pretty much spot on when you were pointing out the area that they were gonna, you know, that was the sweet spot. We're making pretty much exactly the same cast repeatedly to that spot. And that's what? Four, five, I think six? five now. Five and? About five casts. Six casts? Yeah, five and six casts. Oh! I think it's safe to say things have turned on a touch. Indeed! It's back to back. Doesn't feel big. Good one though. Long and skinny. That turn is right there. Out there? Oh, right there. Right there. You have to be so in tune. Now he's putting on a clinic. With your electronics to get that exact line. And once you get it though, they are there. Yeah, this spot's holding a little bit better ones. We hear bass anglers talk about patterning bass or, or getting on a pattern. This is what we're talking about. We are on a pattern that has become very, very specific. And as you've seen in the last five minutes, it's all about finding that spot on a spot. Now, Justin found a big area that had like a gravel bar that came out to a rock point. And when we have and we kind of worked that whole area and we got a few here and there. And then once we hit this one spot, he's had about three and five or six casts and he is dialed in. And that's, that's what we call the pattern. And the pattern right now is the bigger boulders on the edge of this big kind of finger, this vein of gravel that goes to rocks. And when we make almost the exact same cast to that spot, that's when he's getting hooked up. Now, I'm hoping that I can get one of my casts to go right through that spot. So I'm gonna stop talking and uh, start casting. There we yeah. go. Oh yeah. Good one? Sure feels like it. Of course, I've been saying that all day long. They yeah, all feel they're good. They're all good. They all feel good to me. I hadn't, I hadn't fished for like two or three weeks, so they all yeah. feel good. Another chunk. Boy, he. That's the first one today that really hammered. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, he just chomped it. I'm gonna spin it around. Mm -hmm. Hit this little gravel spot out in front of us here. here in that turn. We caught him. Half a dozen of them earlier. We'll make our last stand here. Just a little dink. There's a good one. There's the show closer. Hey folks, thanks for joining us here on In-Depth Outdoors. Central Wisconsin, mid-summer crankbait. We're gonna end with a oh double here. Gosh. This one's a good oh! one. Oh! Don't worry, I think this one's a good one. All right, thanks Justin. Crankbaits are in the summer. It's awesome.